So big businesses and governments are spying on us. There's nothing we can do. We just have to roll over and accept our fate. I've heard that so many times, and of course, you're not going to be protecting anything with that attitude, sir or madam. Seriously though, can you blame them? We've created an insecure system with the internet, so you can't really fault somebody for wanting the private information that's just floating out there. That's like just too tantalizing to pass up. Here's a list of the best tools to help lock down your internet browsing and keep that private data safe. Remember, you're not paranoid if they are out to get you. It's proper. This video isn't for proving that non-consensual tracking exists. This one is. I made it a while ago. And guess what? I've been analyzing privacy apps ever since. And the good news is, there's a whole lot of them. The bad news is that most of them suck. Some of them are using outdated information, some of them were never secure to begin with, and of course you know the famous ones that leave the back door wide open and leak your data intentionally. That being said, I spent a lot of time curating this list, including going a bit crazy and contacting developers about specific lines of code and then submitting stuff to GitHub, which I don't think they appreciated very much. But anyway, my social awkwardness is your gain, and I will be doing in-depth videos on all these options as well as like data encryption and chat options, email, but let's focus on something that we do every single day, some of us a lot more than we should every day, which is browsing the internets. Oh, and I almost forgot, I made sure they're all free, open source, multi-browser, and multi-platform. If you don't watch this video any further, let this be the first real privacy suite in your toolbox. Hidden scripts, addressing refers, cookies, locally stored objects, or super cookies. It's also very confusing, which is why it really helps to have a one-stop shop plugin that handles your privacy needs automatically. Remember ghostery and disconnect? Sweet. Now forget everything you know about them and use Privacy Badger instead. Ghost resells your information that it was trying to protect if you don't uncheck a box properly and disconnect is better, more open, but it has limited functionality unless you pay. Pay for privacy? That just sounds gross. So Privacy Badger is made by the EFF. These are the good guys. They fight for our digital civil liberties every day. Really though, there's not many all-in-one browser plugins that do what Privacy Badger does. As you can see, while we browse, Third parties constantly call home to ad networks, collect our system information, and gather data of the pages we choose to visit. Privacy Badger blocks all those attempts at spying while keeping the legit ones. They're also making strides on the policy level with companies that commit to honoring our do not track requests. Privacy Badger thinks it's unfair to block all ads, but does block the ones that appear to be tracking. So if there is no tracking, the ad will be displayed and therefore will be able to earn revenue. If you want to block all ads though, you need something else like... Leave flashing ads and pop-ups for archaic websites like GeoCities and AngelFire. Adblock Plus has almost single-handedly cleaned up the internet for 300 million of us. The clean look is in part by element hiding, but it also blocks scripts and iframes rather intuitively. Adblock Plus works over tricky sites like Facebook and handles the flash on YouTube ads and random video suggestions. <laughs> it's okay, I'd rather have you block ads on this video than to not know about Adblock being an awesome tool. It's worth mentioning that Adblock recently will run acceptable ads unless you hit the check mark to say otherwise, so don't forget to turn that off. Ah, 2005, mega upload, and rapid share, and those other piracy apps. I'm just getting misty eyed thinking about it. Anything you wanted, you could share it there. In fact, Mega Upload claimed 4% of the internet traffic back in the day. With a founder so dedicated, he renamed himself .com. The story of Mega Upload was a classic one, hearkening back to the days when the internet was all about freedom and all the good and bad that came with it. Mega was born from the ashes of Mega Upload, rising up like a phoenix, now leveled up with anonymity and encryption. 
Their extension runs in the background and is good for if you want big files fast and all at once. I contacted Mega to ask where the encryption happens in source, and it's different for each browser. For instance, in Chrome, Mega downloads the encrypted version of the file you need, decrypts it locally, and then provides you with the original version. Their web interface gives you 50 gigabytes of free encrypted storage, and they've made it easy to decrypt with the option of including the key in the link you send to people when you share files with them. Now we've covered almost everything you could look for when browsing online. Blocking ads, unwanted tracking, or even transferring files securely. But there is one thing we forgot. One thing that a lot of us forget, and it's so simple. All of these steps towards privacy don't make any difference if you're just blasting our browsing traffic over the web unencrypted. And that's where HTTPS comes in. So there's talks about encrypting the framework of the internet. That would be best, but until then, we have secure HTTP. Did you know that you are sending a command to a server every time you type a URL into the browser? It's called an HTTP request. While you browse, you are fetching and transmitting data across the web, and most of this data flows through in dun dun dun, plain text. Plain text is privacy's worst enemy. For example, this indie site has some really cool Star Wars replicas that you want to buy, but judging by the missing lock icon, there's no secure HTTP in sight. All the real Sith Lords have to do is wait for you to submit that insecure form with all your private information. HTTPS Everywhere will force transport layer security whenever possible. Not surprisingly, the S in HTTPS stands for secure and encrypts the data you send so you can live to fight another day for the light side. No script gets an honorable mention for its protection against clickjacking and cross-site scripting, but it's at the cost of your usability, so it just didn't make this list. Like I said, with this video, I meticulously picked the tools that would work right out of the box with no caveat, because if you have to fiddle with it, you'll turn it off and it's not really protecting your privacy then. So with your privacy, you can have no caveats, pretty much. Check back soon for more in-depth tutorials on these tools and so many other things. My head is going to explode with excitement. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and more importantly, subscribe and share with your friends because we all have to be united on this front of privacy and I'm gonna do the best that I can for you guys on that. So I'm Nixie Pixel and you're watching OS Alt, your source for open source. Bye guys. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I'm redhead, and I'm still back, and I'm redhead stepchild, but it's okay.